Okay, just pulled up. Got a 1960s ranch style home. And it's a 19, it's old, right? So it's a little bit older, so we're gonna find old problems. So remember, if you're putting in an offer on an old home, it is going to come with old problems. So use this as a as justification of seeing if you would wanna tackle anything like this. Uh, this one's probably gonna be a little bit better than most because this one looks like flippers came through it, I think. So this week's giveaway is going to be a flashlight. So this is a, a Nikron B70 flashlight. And what it is, it's a 900 lumen flashlight that has a rotating head here. So you can see you can make it up and sideways uh, fairly easily. I am more of a Phoenix fan, but if you need a flashlight, this is pretty cool. There's, you know, three different settings. There's a strobe setting, and then there is a red and green light on it for camping uh, or, or hunting, whichever you decide. So if you would like to win this flashlight, please leave a comment below and hit the like button. And in the middle of this episode, I will announce last week's winner. All right, or Isis will, sorry. All right, let's go check it out. So I just listened to last clip and I said better than most. What I mean better than most is that it's better for me because whenever you see, you know, wood and sheetrock sitting right in front of the house, you know, when I say it's going to be good, it's good for finding stuff. So we have some flashing issues around the window. You can see they've had issues right here. So we'll go inside to see if we have any water penetration around the windows. Do it being a flip, it's probably freshly patched and painted, but the flashing should tr protrude out of the siding a little bit because uh, this is an easy area for water penetration. So you can see right here too as well, the, uh, the flashing's not penetrated very far, protruding, and you can see the they're using caulking to seal up the siding right there. Not an adequate repair or fix. Very temporary actually. So whenever you see large trees removed like this in the front yard and you see the sidewalk really cracked up, you want to start thinking of the main sewer lines and especially as a uh, home inspector in the field, you, when you see stuff like this, you definitely want to recommend for a sewer scope scan or a hydrostatic test on the property. So we do have galvanized water lines, we have copper water lines here so they've done some repairs in the past they have a brass fitting in the middle which is adequate uh, but with it having galvanized we're gonna spend some extra time in the attic to try to identify any water leaks that may be occurring from it you see me beating up on this all the time but literally this is the best area for termites you know you have heavy foliage and then right here check this out this is the primary condensate drain line for the AC and it's terminating right into this foliage right so you have water heavy foliage moisture your house is made out of wood perfect area for termites so we have a new pvc clean out over here and then right over here too as well so it looks like they may have done some prior repairs to the the cast iron drain lines underneath the home but with that being said you still would probably recommend for a sewer scope scan or the work orders for the prior repair to see if there's any warranties involved. So a lot of people ask, you know, should I cut down trees? These trees are pretty close to the property, but I always tell them, you know, cutting down trees might not always be the best option because the roots create voids. And this is a perfect example. Look at this void that happened here. And you gotta think larger scale. Think of that big tree in the front yard. And you can see the void in the ground leading up to this, to this. So your house just settles in these voids and causes your foundation to move. You know, so this is something that you really wanna pay attention to whenever you're maintaining your property. Don't let these trees get too big or even start growing right next to your structure. Grading and drainage is everything. You can see how the uh, how the water is gonna flow down here and then underneath the slab over time. I do believe they've had foundation work to this and whenever foundation work is done, you wanna make sure they regrade your property too because if not, the whole, all the foundation work was done for no reason whatsoever. So coming up to the condenser, I always like to read the number and pull as much data for I can for my client. 
So we have a 2013 16 sear, five ton unit with 410A Freon, and then our breaker sizes uh, are uh, 30 and a 40. So uh, you wanna make sure that the breakers match the panel box. You wanna make sure they have the newer Freon or they're educated about the old Freon if it's in place. And then we can at least get the, the year for it. Okay, I'm hiding from the sun a little bit, but one thing you wanna think of is like roof lines where this valley is and grading and drainage. And you can see all the water. It's gonna fall in this area here. And you can see it's, it's dipped down. All the water uh, flows in this direction. And then you can see a freshly patched area where they had deflection cracks in the past and they're reopened back up and that's 100% due to grading and drainage you know so whoever worked on this foundation didn't regrade the structure like it's supposed to be and guess what it's going to happen again it's going to it's going to move just like it did before one thing I've learned in my sewer scope class before is if you see a PVC clean out in a cast iron pipe you should be asking yourself why is that there? So we'll definitely recommend for a sewer scope scan or a hydrostatic test on this property. Uh, like I said before, if you see squares like this, you know the foundations had previous work and well, that's a little odd. So you have a, a clean out in this area. So this is how the water's flowing into the structure. So they must have had a water issue. So we'll definitely tell them that you know, if they have the sewer scope ca camera out while they're out here, they can go ahead and scan that too to make sure it's clean and not crushed. But you, know, you can see water sits in this area right here. Screened in vents for your dryer exhaust is a no-go. Uh, that is actually a fire hazard. So looking on the outside, like I said before, I always want to try to get the trees away from the service lines. Sometimes it's the city, sometimes it's you, so it might be questions that you want to ask. And then also uh, the service entrance wire is actually too low in the backyard. So if you do have kids or something, you definitely want to educate them that this runs a lot of electricity through it and uh, it is dangerous. So make sure that you inform everyone in your family not to touch it. Okay, so we have another clean out in the back of the property. So just from judging that we have the clean out for over there, there's a clean out a little bit further down on the property. Now we have a clean out here. So my guess is actually the sewer line goes that way. Because we have prior repairs, we have some settlement issues inside the property and uh, we have cast iron on the other side of the property. I'd still recommend to get a sewer scope scan or a hydrostatic test because we don't know if they went all the way underneath. So either ask for the paperwork to see what's been done, see if there's any warranties and two, or get the test done to make sure that you're not getting into like a $20,000 fix underneath your structure. When looking at your gutter systems, these joints are a really good spot to look at because you can see these are, this is actually leaking and rolling back and rusting out the, uh, the vinyl. So there's obviously a lot of heavy traffic in the roof right here. So the gutter's probably not properly sloped and it rolls out over here. Oh, and that explains the water sitting in here in the surface drain now. So, so you always wanna look at everything twice because the story starts to come together why things the way they are. One of the number one questions I get asked all the time is, I don't have any prior construction experience to be a home inspector. And can you be good at being a home inspector with zero construction experience? And Josh is a really great example. He's our lead home inspector in the company. And you've only you've been doing it two years? That's my third year, yeah. Oh, bad boss. It's, three. Gone, it's, gone, by, it's gone by fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, three years have gone by pretty quick. And uh, he's probably inspected over 1,500 homes, you know, 12 to 1,500. I need to look at the numbers there. but. Um, what'd you do before? Uh, I was a junior high band director for 10 years before I started doing this. Yeah, so... so no, I mean, I, I handy, I can do stuff around the house, but definitely not heavy construction or building houses, anything like that. So, uh, yeah, I just always tinkered with houses, so I thought this would be a, a fun career change. And, and, you know, once you go through the classes and get your license, I highly recommend either uh, being with the company for a while, get training with them, or like I joined in Action, and, and they do a great job of, of training their, their new inspectors on not only things to look for in the inspection process, but how to do a home inspection properly. Yeah. So, highly recommend that, but it's a, it's a great, great career. Yeah, so if you're looking to get into it, what he was saying is, is don't just go to the classes and then jump right into it. You'll get sued pretty, pretty yeah. quick. 
Find, yeah. find a yeah, find a mentor if you want to yeah. you know be your own boss and start your own company. That's yeah. good for you. Um, but just find a mentor when you first get in the field because. Uh, you know, even though I, I took all the classes and took my license test, most of what I've learned on how to find things and what to look for has been through my field. training with the action and, and experience in the field. Nice. All right, cool. So I hope that answers your question. Have a good one. Yep. Okay, everyone. Isis is going to announce the winner. Who won the prize? Hey, everybody. This is Isis, the marketing coordinator. We're going to go ahead and pick the next giveaway winner here on my screen. So good luck everybody, thank you so much for entering. This time we had 21 people enter. And if you win, you can go ahead and contact us or we'll contact you first. Yeah, good luck everybody, let's do it. All right, and the winner is Brian Shabadava. Thank you so much for entering, we'll go ahead and contact you. Or if you wanna go ahead and contact us first, whichever one comes first, on Facebook or YouTube, and good luck guys thank you so much for entering and i hope you guys enter the next giveaway okay so uh we took our zero right here in the center of the structure and you can see this uh door frame is a little canted and crooked and the door is sticking a little bit so we went ahead and pulled out our zip level because everything's you know freshly patched and paint it and it's hard to spot uh, deflection across a structure and you can see right here that we have a 2.4 inch raise over a about a 13 foot span if I had to guess all right so recommend for a foundation company or structural engineer so like I said before, you know, you want to look for leaks on the galvanized water lines here. Sorry for the shaky camera, but you can look right here. You see the water stains around the pipe there and the rust and corrosion on the pipe. Uh, this is an easy spot to call out and they definitely would probably just want to budget to come in and replace these so they can maybe have negotiating power or um, they understand what they're purchasing and understand that this is something that's gonna have to tackle down the line. So Josh is in there, open up the, the unit and he, he identified that the, the blower is uh, dirty and the filter is really dirty too. So this is actually a pretty common call out. The two number one things that are almost on every inspection report just from lack of maintenance is service the AC and repair the roof. I know we're not rodent inspectors as home inspectors, but you know, you see holes like this. Uh, this is a squirrel hole right here. And this is something that you wanna at least inform them on uh, to let them know that they need some sort of pest inspection or pest remediation plan moving into this property. Some positive notes on a property like this. You can see it's a little bit older. The purlins look good. The, they have really good uh, collar ties and they've added additional support over here from wherever they done some repairs in the past. Uh, insulation looks good. Ducts are properly supported. So, you know, whoever did the HVAC here, I say uh, did, a, did a pretty good job and the additional support added looks good too as well. So right here, what we're doing is we're testing the shower pan. Uh, shower pans are required to hold two inches of water. So this stopper has a two inch topper on it. And the reason why we, we specifically chose this shower pan to test is because it's it's flush with the floor it's not indented into the foundation and then also you can see some slight discoloration at the base of the board here so what we'll be able to do is use our moisture meters on this wall to catch any moisture coming through the shower pan and also you should be able to see it on the outside exterior foundation that this uh, shower pan is leaking. So Josh pulls out the infrared camera and it looks dry for the most part. And then he also is gonna use the protimeter here to see if we have any leaks. So you can, he's gonna hit it with the moisture meter. Got it dry, it is dry there. Yeah, dry across the carpet. Yeah, so I think we're safe. Actually, that's, that's good news. Maybe it's an old, old leak or nothing at all. Maybe it's just dirty. 
Okay, one more find as I leave the property. We test every single outlet and you can see this one's really loose. There's only one here. Uh, it's easy area for water to get in. So this is definitely something you wanna fix. This is a, a safety hazard uh, to your structure and yourself. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap up the video there. And um, so covering the major issues here. So they obviously need to call out a foundation company. And with this foundation company, there's two strategies you can go about this. The foundation company, they're gonna quote you no matter what. And this foundation company has engineers. They're gonna be like, hey, we have engineers that certify this work. And but you gotta remember the foundation company works for, the structural engineers work for the foundation company. So it's going to be bias. So they're going to recommend for repair no matter what, uh, putting those piers in the center of the structure. If you wanna see if you can live in there safely and you don't want negotiations to happen and you wanna see if you can come in, you hire a structural engineer and a structural engineer can see if the slab is meeting the tolerances within deflection. They run math, they, do, they shoot levels across the floor and they shoot and they'll run the deflection calculus, <laughs> the deflection formula to see if the house is meeting tolerances or not. In most cases, most properties do meet that tolerance. So you want to, that's the strategy you can go in. You can get a structural engineer to see if you can live in the property safely and not have to spend big bucks to move in. Or you can hire a foundation company to help have a dollar figure to negotiate on your property. Second thing is the galvanized water lines. We knew that coming in and if you buy an old home, you're gonna know that going in that the home has galvanized water lines and we're probably gonna find a leak. And then the third item, what was the third item? The roof repair. You're always on older homes that have old roofs, you're always gonna have roof repairs. And the reason why that's on there is anything dealing with water around your structure, that's gonna be cause the most damage to your property. So uh, that's Chris with A Action. If you have any home inspection questions, please drop it in the comments section and please leave a comment and hit the like button to win that prize and catch us next week. Thanks guys, bye.